So once you've downloaded the example files, you should um, find the 3D model of the Farnsworth house. I've gone through modeled for us. If you're looking to beef up on your Rhino knowledge, we have plenty of tutorials on blackspectotals.com that you can go through and um, kind of learn the in and ins and out of modeling. But since we're focusing on Maxwell in this course, we're just going to uh, kind of uh, start with an example file. We're going to go through and apply materials. Um, set up the scene and set up the, the, uh, the actual lights and environment and stuff like that. So um, just to make sure everything is working correctly, uh, we've assumed that you've been able to go through and install uh, Maxwell. Once you've been able to install Maxwell, um, you should on your, on your C drive or wherever you might have uh, located it, it'll be a Next Limit folder. Uh, Maxwell is uh, made by Next Limit. Um, they are uh, a Spanish company. Um, right now, the current version is Maxwell 2. I know um, they're looking to update to Maxwell 3, or at least right now, at the time of this recording, Maxwell 2 is the most up-to-date version. Maxwell has kind of a number of components. So there is um, uh, this maxwell.exe um, file, which is your, your Maxwell Studio, or, or let's say Maxwell Renderer, I should say. Um, Within the Maxwell kind of family, there is a product called Maxwell Studio. Uh, that's a kind of separate interface where you can actually go through, model, set up cameras, set up your uh, rendering similar to what you do in Rhino. I know most people use Maxwell, typically use it as a plugin to um, some kind of 3D modeling software, whether that's 3ds Max, whether that's Revit, whether it's Rhino, uh, whether it's SketchUp even. Um, you can go to the Maxwell website. They have uh, a ton of plugins that have been developed by their people. And um, and I think all the plugins kind of fall in a kind of very kind of similar format in the sense that they're all kind of referencing back to the same kind of inherent uh, framework that Maxwell set up. Um, so we're going to actually be using um, just the Maxwell uh, render engine. And so we're going to fire that up. And this is the actual um, kind of console that you'll see that uh, the rendering start to develop, basically. So you'll bring what's referred to as an MXM file, which is the kind of exported geometry file from Rhino, um, with the information about the rendering and the materials into here. Um, it'll then uh, it'll then press render. Um, and then it'll actually start to bake your renderings here. Um, assuming that you are able to get Maxwell installed, you also have to get the license set up. Um, under help, um, there's license info. And in this particular uh, uh, thing, you can actually add and remove licenses um, here. So you want to go ahead and add your license. If you don't add your license, it will allow you to render, but you'll get this watermark on your renderings, and your renderings will kind of be set up at a max scale, a max size. I think it's like 400 by 500 or something like that, quite small uh, in pixel dimensions. We'll go ahead and cancel out of that and shrink this down for now. Um, once you've gone through and, and downloaded the, um, in this particular course, we're kind of focusing on Maxwell as a, uh, as a plugin for Rhino. Um, whatever, I think if you're using SketchUp or Revit or um, any number of courses, you know, whatever you download, um, once you get it downloaded, bringing up the, the proper toolbars in Rhino, these are our Maxwell toolbars. Um, you can always, uh, if those don't show up for some reason, you can always do a dash Maxwell uh, underscore toolbar reset. And basically what this will do is, uh, if they weren't open or not showing up for some reason, that should bring up your Maxwell tools. Um, and you can always go back and dock your tools um, on the side here, uh, similar to what I'm doing. 